If you are coming to the 2019 Game Developers Conference later this month, make sure you do not overlook all the great sponsored content available. To you as you are planning out your time at the show, game industry leaders like Unity, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Wiveport are presenting a smorgasbord of interesting talks during the GD 2019 Dev Days. Tour full days, Monday and Tuesday, of in-depth technical discussions and business guidance aimed at helping game developers succeed on these companies' platforms. There are also a few notable sponsored sessions taking place at GD this year that you will want to keep an eye on. Google is presenting a special keynote session on Tuesday, for example, that's open to all GD pass holders and promises an exciting announcement. You should also check out the Fair Play Alliance's keynote session, which is backed by the Fair Play Alliance's 19 members, including game industry leaders like Blizzard, Epic, Riot, and Ubisoft, and promises a lively discussion on web publishers, game developers, and game platforms should apply the best practices of player behavior and content moderation online safety approaches as key elements of their design strategies. Understanding the most effective ways to combat and prevent toxic behavior in games and the game industry at large is vitally important. So in addition to the fake note, consider attending one of the many great talks taking place during the Fair Play Alliance Summit on Wednesday, March 20th. OFTDC 2019. In dispelling common player behavior myths, for example, Blizzard research scientist Natasha Miller will share lessons learned by multiple pro members about player behavior and motivations toward disruptive in games. Expect to walk away better equipped to determine which theories to ignore and which to embrace when determining how to stop disruptive. Behaviors in your games and our communities. Do not miss it. If you are curious about the state and future of blockchains in games, make sure you do not miss the special blockchain day on Thursday of DD week, where companies like Engine and Ubisoft are sponsoring some intriguing sessions as well as a special engine sponsored blockchain mixer networking event in the West Hall of the Moscone Convention Center. Finally, before you show up at DD 2000, and mighty make sure you are ready to hit the ground running by checking out THGDC Digital Tote Bag, a quick and easy way for you to access key information from leading game and technology companies who are sponsoring or exhibiting at the show. It's part of DD's ongoing efforts to eliminate needless waste and Ensure attendees enjoy a more efficient and environmentally friendly event. It's also a great resource for you to get informed about what top game tech companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Unity, and more will be offering during the show some year, even nothing, special swag, or other goodies that you can get while the tote back, though you may also need to stop by their booth to claim them. So make sure to check out the digital tote bag before you arrive, and do not skip past the many sponsored sessions on offer on THEGDC 2019 session schedule as you are planning out your time at the show, which takes place March 18th through the 22 at the newly renovated Moscone Center in San Francisco. Bring your team to GD. Register a group of 10 or more and save 10% in conference passes. Learn M-O-R-A-H-E-R-A. For more details of NGDC 2000, and 19 visit the show's official website, or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, OS, God Art Social and DD as sibling organizations, under parent company Informa. 11 bit studios survival strategy games Frostpunk and this War of Mine are both standout examples of games that push players to make hard choices 
and attendees of the 2019 Game Developers Conference in March will get an inside look at how they came together. Together, 11-Bit Studios Creative Director Michael Dress Jeski on Art, D-I-R-E-C-T-O-R-P-R-Z-M-Y-S-L-A-W Marshall will be presenting a design chart or call about why I make games, lessons from Frostpunk, and this war of mine. The pair will discuss specific approaches to the creative process and the concepts utilized during the process. They will also show you how to cultivate a specific work culture within a team and how art and design processes are driven to make games like it is. War of Men and Frostpunk. Finally, you should walk away with greater insight into how games are maturing into an influential medium and learn the techniques used to achieve artistic and design goals. On this War of Men and Frostpunk, you can find more info about this talk and many more over on THEGDC 2000 on 19 session scheduler. There you can begin to lay out your GD 2019, which takes place March 18th through the 10th at the newly renovated Moscone Center in San Francisco. Bring your team to GD, register a group of 10 or more and save 10% in conference passes. Learn M-O-R-E-H-E-R-E. For more details o n g d c 2000 on 19 visit the show's official website. Or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, OS, Goddard Sutra and DD as sibling organizations, under parent company Informa, as acting president and CEO of the Entertainment Software Association. Stanley Pierre Lewis views himself as one of the leading voices for the positive impact video games can have on society. We are seeing video games being used in lots of positive ways, and that's a great narrative for video games, he said in a recent interview with Gamma Sutra during the DICE Summit in Las Vegas this month. It's in the ESA's interest to highlight the positive aspects of the game industry NASA is the U.S. trade organization and lobbying group that represents some of the Biggest corporations in the industry, including Epic Games, Activision Blizzard, and Nintendo, to name just a few. So last summer, when the World Health Organization officially classified gaming disorder alongside established addictive disorders, Pierre Lewis, who's been with the answer since 2015 as general counsel, took particular issue with the classification's negative connotations. There is such concern with this particular classification, gaming disorder, as being proposed by wise that is not based on medial consensus. It's based on a point of view by some medical experts, Pierre Lewis said, whose website, STATSTHAT, the decision to include the gaming disorder Classification is based on reviews of available evidence and reflects a consensus of experts from different disciplines on geographical regions. Who defines gaming disorder as such? Gaming disorder is defined in the 11th revision of the International Classification of Diseases, it 11, as a pattern of gaming, behavior, digital gaming, or it ill gaming characterized by impaired control over gaming, increasing priority given to gaming over other activities to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other interests and daily activities, and continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. For gaming disorder to be diagnosed, the behavior pattern must be of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational or other important areas of functioning and would normally have been evident for at least 12 months. In a corresponding talk, he gave advice. 
he noted that the American Psychological Association, American Medical Association, and American Psychiatric Association all declined to classify any level of video game use as a disorder. Pierre Lewis said that a gaming disorder misdiagnosis could have negative consequences on people with physical and or mental health issues. There are several instances where kids would have turned to video games to escape mental and physical abuse are undergoing treatment for gaming disorder instead of the underlying abuse they have endured. He said, some people do have a healthy video game habits that they form, and when someone has underlying addictive or compulsive tendencies, they can get hooked on games.